Hi guys, this is Ivy from Wobbly here to show you how to fill out the Paycheck Protection Program form powered by Cross River and to hopefully make things a little bit easier. Let's go ahead and get started. First, as you can see up here in the upper left hand corner, you'll see Wobbly powered by Cross River. Next, I'll show you your step one where we're going to ask you to tell us a little bit about your business. Now, before we go ahead and finish this portion, make sure that if you have already started your application, but you lost your link, click Find My Application instead of continuing with the form. If this is your first time, go ahead and move on to General Business Information, where it's going to ask you some basic info, like your legal business name, your DBA or trademark name if that's applicable, your business email, the best business phone number to be able to reach you at, and then next, it'll take you into additional information, starting with your entity type. If you're not sure what your entity type is, go ahead and click this blue hyperlink that says help me choose my entity type. It's going to give you some great resources to find the thing that's going to work best for you and your business. In my particular case, I went ahead and clicked on this little down arrow, selected S-Core, and moved on with the rest of the application. After that, it's going to ask you for your EIN, Employer Identification Number, so that we can try to find you in the system your business start date, it's just asking for the month and the year in which you officially started the business, the total number of employees, the state of incorporation or organization, basically where you're located, and then it's going to ask for something called your NAICS code. If you're not sure what your NAICS code is, that's totally okay. All you have to do is click on the blue hyperlink on the word here, it'll open up a brand new tab and give you the information to be able to find it. Once you have that information, go ahead and enter in your NAICS code. Next, it'll ask you if you're a franchise. In my particular case, that's a no. And then it'll ask you if you have previously received a PPP loan. In my particular case, it's a no. But what if you have? All you have to do is go ahead and click where it says yes. And it'll ask you two additional questions. First, did you receive your PPP loan with Cross River Bank? So simple yes or no. And then next, it'll ask how much the PPP loan was for. Please make sure that you reference your information from last year to make sure you get this up to date as possible. After you've entered in that correct information, we'll move on to the business address. All you have to do is enter the actual address for the business itself, and it'll actually show up right here in the drop down. Double check to make sure that the information is correct, and go ahead and click Next Step. After that, it's going to ask you for your owner information. We're actually almost done. We'll start with the very first owner of the business. In my particular case, that's me. So go ahead and enter in my name. If this is going to be the primary contact for this application, yes or no. Then it states that the primary contact will receive all correspondence regarding this SBA loan. Please ensure you have access to this email address. Again, make sure that the email address is correct as you entered it on the previous page. I'll ask for your email address, your social security number, Again, just for the sake of this particular demo, we've made something up to be able to make it as easy as possible and give you a visual for what it's going to look like. Your percentage of ownership, your date of birth, your a mobile phone number that we can reach you at, again, just in case they have any kind of questions, comments, or concerns about your particular PPP application. They want to make sure they have a way to contact you. Your position in the company, if you're self-employed, an individual contractor, etc. In my particular case, I'm going to go ahead and click Owner. Then it's going to ask you a couple more questions. It'll ask you if you're a veteran status. So in my particular case, I'm not a veteran. Your gender, your race, and your ethnicity. After you've entered that in for that particular set of information, it's going to ask for the owner's home address. If it's the same as the business address on file, all you have to do is go ahead and click Same Business Address. Otherwise, enter in your address to the best of your ability. If there is more than one owner at the particular company, all you have to do is go ahead and click Add Additional Owner and enter in the information just like you did above with all of their contact and identification information. Once you've entered in all the information for all of the owners for this particular company, you're going to go ahead and click Next Step. Now, be patient. This step does take a couple of minutes for it to be able to go through because it's verifying the application to make sure it's correct to the best of your ability. Please make sure that you don't resubmit the page. Don't try to refresh the page. Just be patient. It takes just a couple of seconds. We want to make sure that you have the best experience when filling out this application as possible. 
Next, it's going to take you to a page that looks just like this, where it says save your link. Please copy this link and save it somewhere safe. If you get disconnected or need to continue later, you need this link so that you can con uh, continue your loan application. They also send it to you via email, just in case. After that point in time, it's going to take you to the questionnaire. So, let's go ahead and go through it together. Question number one. Is the applicant and the owner of the applicant presently suspended, debarred, proposed for debarment, declared ineligible, voluntarily excluded from participation in this transaction, or presently involved in any bankruptcy? Go ahead and click yes or no. Two, has the applicant and the owner of the applicant or any business owned or controlled by any of them ever obtained a direct or guaranteed loan from the SBA or any other federal agency that is currently delinquent or has defaulted in the last seven years? Go ahead and click yes. Or no? Is the applicant and the owner of the applicant an owner of any other business or have common management with any other business? If yes, please list all such businesses and describe them with a relationship on a separate sheet. Again, we're going to go ahead and click no. Is the applicant, if an individual, or any individual owning 20% or more of the equity of the applicant presently incarcerated for any felony, presently subject to, subjected to an indictment, criminal information, arraignment, or by any other means by which formal criminal charges are brought? Yes or no. Within the last five years, for any felony involving fraud, bribery, embezzlement, or false statement in a loan application, or an application for federal financial assistance, or within the last year for any felony, has the applicant or any owner of the applicant been convicted, pleaded guilty, pleaded nola contendere, or commenced any form of parole or probation? Yes or no. Is the United States the principal place of residence for all of the employees of the applicant included in the applicant's payroll calculation above? In my case, we're going to go ahead and click yes. Has the applicant received an SBA Economic Injury Disaster Loan, idle, idle loan, between January 31st, 2020 and April 3rd, 2020? If yes, provide the details on a separate sheet. Again, we're going to go ahead and click no. Is the applicant a franchise that is listed in the SBA's franchise directory? Yes or no? And did your, uh, did your business experience a 25% gross revenue decline in any 2020 quarter compared with the same quarter in 2019? Go ahead and click yes. Yes or no, according to what's going to be the most applicable for you. After that point in time, it's going to ask for which quarter in 2020 did your business see the greatest decline in revenue? In my case, I'm going to go ahead and kick, click Q3 because that's most applicable to me. And we're going to click Next Step. After that, we're almost there. So we're going to go into the loan purpose. The entire purpose of this is to be able to state what you're going to be using this loan for. Whether that's payroll, lease or mortgage interest, utilities, operations expenditures, property damage, supplier costs, protection costs, etc. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and click Payroll, but please click everything that you are going to be using this Paycheck Protection Program loan for. After that, it's going to ask, how do you file your taxes? As a corporation, as a partnership, as a nonprofit, or other? In my case, I'm clicking as a corporation. After that, it's going to ask you just a little bit more information. So, we're going to go into the Annual Gross Payroll Amounts. Starting with the top and working our way down, if you are an employer and file Forms 940, please refer to Part 2, Line 3, Total Payments to All Employees uh, from your Form 940 from 2019. Alternatively, you can sum up four consecutive quarters from Part 1, Line 2, Wages, Tips, and Other Compensation. So let's go ahead and we're going to enter in that amount to the best of our ability. Okay. If you, uh, if you report any self-employment income and file a 1040, please refer to line three, uh, 31, net profit amount. In our case, we don't have anything like that, so we're going to enter in a zero. Okay. If you report any income as a partnership and file form 1065, refer to line 14 from the self-employment earnings. Again, this doesn't apply to us, but if it does, go ahead and enter that directly into the account. After that, it's going to have your payroll calculations. So, please set the amounts based on the same period um, used in the gross payroll section above. So, we're going to enter in the amount that we paid on vacation, family, parental, medical, or sick leave, group insurance, retirement benefits, 
state and local taxes compensation. Portion of wages in excess of $100,000 a year. And the total loan request amount. This is going to tell you how much the total loan request amount has been from us. So, as you can see, our average monthly payroll is $20,000. Our maximum loan amount, because it's the average monthly payroll amount times 2.5, is going to be $50,000. Next, it's going to ask you to enter in your account or routing information. So please provide the bank, and, uh, bank routing and account numbers for your business bank account. Later in this application, you'll be asked to upload bank statements for this bank account. If the routing um, account numbers you provide here do not match the bank statements you upload, this will delay your application. So let's go ahead and just take a quick second. We're going to enter this into the best of our ability. Excellent. Now that we've entered in the appropriate information, we're going to go ahead and click Next Step. They're going to validate our information. This may take up to 10 seconds. It takes just a couple of seconds in the system for them to be able to validate any and all information right here. Ensure that, again, you are entering in the information to the best of your ability so that we can go ahead and move forward. Please, again, do not redo the page. After that, it's going to ask you to confirm your business owner information. So step five, confirm your business and owner information, and then you're going to agree to terms. So it's going to show you the general business information, the additional business information, and your loan information. Please make sure that's correct before moving forward. After that, it's going to have your owner information right here. And then it's going to have you agree to the application terms, as you can see. Please confirm your identity. You're going to go ahead and click this little down arrow and click on the name that shows up there. And then we're going to attest to the following. First, you attest that you have not applied for a Paycheck Protection Program loan with another lender. If you've applied for more than one loan, I understand that I can be personally liable for any duplicate loans and it can exclude these loans for forgiveness eligibility. Go ahead and click I confirm that I have not applied for a PPP loan with another lender. We're going to scroll down. I understand that by checking the box below, I am confirming that, to the best of my ability, the business information I provided in this application is accurate. You provided all owners of the business who own 20% or more of the company and are a single control person with control over the entity if different than the owners or in the event that there is not a single owner over the threshold. The responses to the eligibility questionnaire were accurate and, com and complete. The information provided in the PPP calculator is accurate as per the instructions laid out in the calculator. This business is not an ineligible business as defined in the section below this. OTO Analytics hereby provides its written instructions to Wampley and its affiliates, agents, or third-party services to obtain business and or credit reports about this particular business. And you hereby provide written instructions to Wampley under the Fair Credit Reporting Act, permitting Wampley and its affiliates, agents, or third-party service providers to obtain one or more consumer reports about me, including any credit reports and or credit score from one or more consumer reporting agencies in connection with OTO Analytics application for a business loan and any subsequent account review or collection activities related. Go ahead and click that box. We're going to scroll down and fill it just a little bit more. You understand that based on the information you provided, you will need to provide the following. A driver's license for this particular individual, avoided check, it must show horizontally, one Form 940 from 2019, the February 2020 bank statement or other proof of business, and a Form 1120. Again, it states what ineligible businesses are. So that's businesses that are engaged in lending, like banks, life insurance policies, finance companies, etc. Passive businesses, these are owned by developers and landlords that do not actively use or occupy the assets acquired or improved with the loan proceeds. Business is primarily engaged in subdividing real property into lots, developing it for resale on its own account. Businesses that are not, uh, that are primarily engaged in owning or purchasing real estate. Businesses that lease land for the installation of a cell phone tower, solar panels, billboards, or wind turbine. Businesses that have entered into a management agreement with a third party that gives management companies sole discretion to manage the operations of the business. Apartment buildings and mobile home parks. Residential facilities that do not provide health care and or medical facilities. Life insurance companies. Business located in a foreign country or owned by an undocumented alien. Businesses selling through a pyramid plan. Businesses deriving more than one-third of gross annual income from legal gambling activities. Private clubs and businesses with, which limit the number of memberships for reasons other than capacity. Government-owned entities, excluding Native American tribes. 
Businesses engaged in SBA loan packaging. Businesses providing prudent sexual material. Businesses primarily engaged in political or lobbying activities. And speculation. Speculative businesses are not eligible. This prohibits a loan to an applicant for the sole pur purpose of purchasing and holding an item until the market price increases, engaging in risky business for the chance of an unusually high profit. Speculative businesses include wildcatting in oil, dealing in stocks and bonds, mining in gold or silver, research and development, and building homes for future sale. As, uh, small business lending companies and businesses owned by non-U.S. citizens. After you've read through all of that, you're going to click I confirm and agree to all of those statements above and click submit and e-sign. Again, it does take a couple of seconds. They want to make sure that they enter that in properly. As you can see, congratulations, you've almost completed your loan application for the SBA Paycheck Protection Loan. The last step is to upload all of your requirement, uh, required documents. So we're going to scroll down and we're going to upload all of the information that they've asked for us. As you can see, they actually give us a list. They need the driver's license. Voided check, one form 940 from 2019, February 2020 bank statement, or form 1120. So all five of those need to be uploaded. So we're going to click choose files. We're going to go to our computer and we're going to enter in everything to the best of our abilities. So we're going to go ahead and click right here. You can see there's my driver's license. So we went ahead enter that directly into the system. As I've um, mentioned a couple of times before, any and all information that I show you guys directly in these is to be able to help you to the best of your ability. So we've got, you know, our driver's license and voided check. Now we're going to get a one form from the 940. Again, we're going to click to choose files. We're going to go to our documents. We're going to click on the appropriate section and we're going to enter that in here. As you can see, you can see our file type. We're going to enter in the correct type next to it to make sure that the system knows exactly what we picked. Almost there. Choose files. Select the correct file on your desktop. Click open. Select the file type. That's going to be my bank statement. Again, one more time. We're going to click choose files. We're going to find the file in question. We're going to click open. We're going to select the file type and we're going to have that be the form 1120. Once you've verified that anything and everything, all five file types that they've asked you for are in fact uploaded into the system, you'll see that there are lovely little checks right here next to every single one of these in the system itself. And then after that point in time, we're going to click Submit Documents. Now, if when you click Submit Documents, it freezes or is unresponsive, unresponsive please go ahead and try to refresh the page. It'll take you to a page that looks like this, where it says, are you ready to submit? This cannot be undone. This is very important. If you are not ready, please press no. If you are, make sure that you go ahead and press the yes button. Essentially, this is a quick thing to be able to say. If the documents are submitted wrong or ineligible, your application will be delayed and you may be required to start from the very beginning to revise the information. Go ahead and click yes if you feel 100% confident and comfortable. After you go ahead and click yes, it'll take up to 20 seconds, just like the last couple of screens. Please be patient. You do not have to refresh the page. Then it's going to take you to a page that looks like this, where it says application complete. Thank you so much for your loan application. You can even click here to see additional status details. At this point in time, Cross River is going to reach out to you directly if they have any questions, comments, concerns, or run into any snags while processing your application, as well as giving you next steps um, once your application has been sent to the lender. At this point in time, if you do run into any questions, comments, or concerns, you can always feel free to reach out to us directly, though. Thanks!